get my six. Not sponsored. Uh, what's up, guys? Just uh, here at the campground making a video this evening, as you can tell by the fire pit behind me. Uh, nursing a hundred thousand little tiny paper cuts here. I'm gonna get into how I got those. It's not a pleasant story, it's a bit painful. Uh, the good news is the pain has stopped because I finally realized what was going on and I stopped allowing these paper cuts to happen. Um, believe it or not, actually, when this kind of thing would happen, I would make them even worse by treating them with a knife and just, I'll get into it. Um, you're gonna wanna pay attention because this has probably happened to you too, whether you know it or not. You're gonna have a big aha moment when I get to it. But listen, the show must go on. Even though I have 100,000 little tiny paper cuts here and all kinds of other stuff, uh, I got a really good story I wanna share with you here quickly and then we get into these paper cuts. As you know, uh, October is coming soon as of this recording. I am kinda known as the guy who invented Halloween with that whole October Nights thing from a couple years ago. and. Now that October Nights Part 2 has been released, of which I will read every single story to you on this channel this this coming October, so make sure to come around for that. Uh, paranormal ghost story type stuff is kind of my thing around here, and a lot of you folks who come around to the channel come to, to, to see that, and I just hear these crazy stories too. Uh, but this one is really neat, and there's a lot of iron, irony in this story, so I'm going to get it out of the way, then I'm going to talk about my paper cuts. Uh, this was submitted by Sally Schultz. And folks, I wanna thank all of you who have been submitting stories. I'm sorry that I just haven't gotten to all of them because there's so many coming in. There's just not enough time. I am figuring out a way to, to, to make it possible to where your stories are heard though. So just bear with me. Sally Sch uh, Schultz writes, hi Kevin. And if you have a story, anything related to the paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoology, UFOs, aliens, anything like that, send it to crazylake at mail.com. Crazylake at mail.com. Hi, Kevin. You may mention my name, Sally Schultz. Not Schultz, like the guy that started the uh, cartoon strip. What was it? Peanuts. It's Schultz. Dang nuts. I want to first tell you that the Virginia t-shirts you have been wearing in your videos, the company I work for prints those t-shirts. Yeah, I usually wear one that says like Virginia Track and Field or Virginia Cross Country or whatever. Um, we just got done printing up some of the Track and Field t-shirts last week. Also, I want to thank you for sharing some of the things that happen around your home and the stories your viewers have been sending you too. Uh, you're welcome. Now, you think it's ironic that I wear the shirts that your company makes you work for? Wait until you hear the irony I've got for you for this next part of your story. Since my dad died three years ago, I've been visiting his grave site uh, every weekend as long as the weather is good. Uh, while visiting, one weekend, I decided to look around the area and see who else was laid to rest near my dad. Uh, while looking, I noticed the founders of Anheuser-Busch, William Clark from the Lewis and Clark Expedition, and some more well-known people. All right, author's note. Uh, Sally, make sure I'm not getting your name wrong already. Yeah, Sally, The uh, some of the uh, descendants of the Anheuser-Busch family live within just right over that hill around the corner from me. And you mentioned, was it William Clark? He's from here originally, right outside of Charlottesville. And uh, let's see, I don't wanna give away too much personal information, but we are 15 minutes drive away from Meriwether Lewis's family's farm. And uh, well, I, I, that's all I'm gonna, listen, we have friends whose houses are on properties that used to be part of that farm. So I'm wondering, like, where in Virginia you live is what I'm wondering. There's just too many similarities here. Okay, continuing with the story. As I was looking around, I noticed what looked like a shadow of a person leaning up against a tall burial marker. Uh, this person looked like they were wearing a coat that went to mid-thigh, boots, and a Civil War Union officer's hat. I didn't think too much of it at the time because I was in a cemetery and the place has some soldiers who were in the Civil War and the shadow person seemed to just be looking around minding their own business. The next weekend when I visited, I went to the area where I saw the shadow person to see if anything could have caused the shadow. There was nothing around the area that could have caused the shadow of a person. 
In the area, I came upon Major Henry D. O'Brien's grave. He was in the Civil War. Since there was an American flag, a Medal of Honor flag, and a Civil War marker at Major Henry D. O'Brien's gravesite, I googled him. I found out he is remembered in history for what he did during the Civil War. Also, I saw the type of clothing worn then, too. While taking all the information in, I was completely shocked because I believe that the shadow human figure I saw was Major Henry D. O'Brien leaning up against one of his family burial markers. Now when I visit my dad, I make it a point to visit Major O'Brien uh, to make sure all is well around his resting place too. Sally, thank you so much for that story. We've had a lot of oddities happen around uh, here on our homestead in the six years, a little more than six years now that we've lived here, actually six years this month. In eight days, it will be the sixth anniversary of when we moved into our house on this property. Um, the house is 119 years old now. Many, many deaths have taken place on the property, in the house, some outside. You're going to find out about a new one in October Nights, Part 2, 31 More Tales for the Halloween season that's coming. Well, it's already out. You can get it on Amazon and Printer Kindle, or you can get it from our Etsy store. Um, I heard a very loud, distinctive tree knock. You always got to get my six, folks. That means watch behind me. That's military terminology for get my back. Uh, but but you can get October Nights Part 2 with an autograph from me, from our Etsy store. The link's in the description box below. And we got a message. Erie forwarded me a message from our viewer, Valerie, uh, that when Valerie got her books, she'd ordered Part 1 and Part 2. One of the covers was bent. So, Valerie, please go check your messages on Etsy. After um, Erie sent me that, I went and left you a message that we're going to send you one to make it right, free of charge. If, if anybody has had any problems with their shipments, please contact us, okay? Now, with that said, I want to tell you about my 100,000 little paper cuts I got. Was it from editing these ghost stories? Was it from writing another book? No, it's not. It's from, uh, listen, it was, it was just from teeny tiny little jabs, little insults, little degradations that I used to, to allow people to uh, delve out to me. Is that the word I'm looking for? Dole out to me. Uh, and I would do nothing about it, but take it. And at times, like I said, I would make it worse by taking a big old knife and making the wound even bigger. And this is figurative speech for self-sabotage. Folks, this is ketchup and this is a paper towel. And the minute I put all this ketchup on my arm, j just before I started recording, I heard a giant crash up here in the forest. And I remembered that 400 pound black bear that we named Biggin that I actually lured into the yard this summer to dig up that nest of yellow jackets, ground hornets. You remember that? Did you see that video? It was really awesome. And I thought, I bet he can smell that. So what's going on, guys, is uh, this is part of uh, a goal that I, I, I kind of set for myself this summer when my family and I, my beautiful bride dearly, a.k.a. Giggly Girl, and our son Daniel took our almost all the way across the country trip. We went out as far as west to the Grand Canyon in Arizona and we drove, took us a couple weeks and we stopped at a lot of places in between. And one of the one of the first places we stopped was the Muhammad Ali Center in, um, in Louisville, Kentucky because I'm a big Muhammad Ali fan and it was important for me to go there. And I felt so inspired by Ali because you, you, you see all the great things he did in the ring. You know, the, the, the upsets with George Foreman, all the, you know, Sonny Liston in the early days. Uh, he did so many great things in the ring. I mean, most people even forget the fact that he was an Olympic gold medalist before all that. Uh, but he did so many things after his fighting days were over, even after he had the onset of Parkinson's disease. He still went around the world and he helped people to the best of his capacity. And, and I thought, you know, my days of glory as far as athletics go are long gone even though i still active run mountain bike hike walk in a 30-day month there's there's 29 days i'm out there doing something really into my health and fitness but i wanted to do something great in honor of ali because all of us have the ability to do something great and so what i wanted to do was kind of help a, a class of people that nobody cares about uh, it's called the working poor See, if you're destitute, poor, people care about you, and they'll give you all kinds of benefits and all this stuff. Um, but if you're the working poor, it's like no one cares. You know, you're out there, you're putting in 50, 60 hours a week, you're earning an income, 
But despite that, it's still not enough to pay your bills or get by. And a lot of times those folks are still uh, taking assistance, even though they might not feel so good about it because they like to work. They want to work and they do work, but they are in jobs that just don't pay high incomes. Uh, or maybe they're folks who like, like you know, we're trying to help uh, my friend Travis Stegel over at Fighting Past 40. Uh, here recently, more than a thousand of you went over there and subscribed to his channel. He, he's, he's pursuing uh, motivational speaking and he's trying to harness social media to help him build his his business. And, and I want to thank all of you who've gone there to help him. Um, so there's a myriad of reasons why people and Travis, by the way, great guy, college educated, uh, used to be an engineer, walked away from that because his heart just wasn't in it went into the army, became a, a U.S. Army Green Beret and served in Afghanistan. Uh, there are people out there who have work ethic, who have ambition, who are doing all that they can do, but they're, they're just not there yet. And so I thought, how can I help these folks? And so a lot of what I've done is I've tried to figure out ways to, like, you know, this stuff I'm doing, selling stuff on Etsy, my woodworking projects and stuff, that's kind of like a lab project trial and error. Is it possible to actually learn a craft like this and go into um, e-commerce and actually make enough from that to support yourself? The answer for me is no. Thank God I write and sell books and do okay on YouTube because the wood thing so far isn't working out for me. But it, it, it kind of came to my attention, and this has been on my mind for some time, that a lot of folks who are in this group of people that I'm trying to help and there's a lot of folks in this group that watch this channel because you've commented in the comment section. You've said, hey, you know, you're describing me. I've worked my entire life, but I still just can't seem to get by. I make just enough to almost not need to get an EBT, EBD card, EBT card. Um, a lot of folks who are doing everything they can are in pain emotionally, psychologically. And a lot of folks are not doing as much as they could be doing because they're kind of weighted down with depression, with anxiety, uh, and they're weighted down by issues such as having 100,000 little tiny paper cuts. Now, it's time to get to that. Uh, I'm going to recommend someone else for you guys to follow and get in touch with because I don't want to leave anybody hanging. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of times when I've made videos, maybe like this one, where you've watched and you've listened, and you're like, oh my God, I can relate to you so much because I've been through the same things. Uh, some of those things being parts of my past I've talked about, which aren't so pleasant, estrangement from three adult children uh, that I wish was not the case, um, estrangement from my parents, which I'm happy is the case, uh, partial relationships with some siblings, no relationships with another, just stuff that most people would never come on the social media and talk about but i have at times because i felt that by opening up it would help people and it has and you've let me know that it has but there were so many of you who i felt were kind of viewing me as their armchair counselor uh and when i opened the email here on the channel crazy lake at .com, you know, in the hopes of getting a lot of these stories, which we have, we've gotten maybe over a hundred so far. A lot of folks sent emails that were very personal and one, it was, there were no stories. Um, I, I, I was being contacted by a lot of folks who need help. And I don't say that in a derogatory way. I say that in a caring way, uh, and in a way to where I am admitting, I am not qualified to be that person to provide that help. Um, I've had people contact me over marital problems, over relationship problems with their parents, with their children, uh, with jobs, about money, just all these things. And I'm flattered that you feel that connection to me and you feel it just from having watched my videos through the years, but I'm not qualified for that. Uh, but I know someone who is, and I'm going to recommend that you talk to that person. This person's name, and he's a follower on this channel, I call him General Jazz. Recently, his, his, his last name's just been converted to Jazz. I've referred to him as three-star three -star retired uh, General Jim Stump. But he's actually a counselor. He wrote this book, and it's, it's called Walks Along the Pier, Tales of a Wounded Healer. It's only one that he's written. 
and I actually read it earlier this year, the beginning of this year, and I did a book review on it, and I think a lot of you probably went to Amazon and got it. And I'm not plugging his book for him. I'm just telling you about Jim here uh, for several reasons. You're going to know why here soon. Um, but I'm, I'm showing you uh, this for purposes of credibility. He is a licensed clinical, whatever it is. I don't want to give the wrong thing, but he deals with families. He's a counselor, and he's out in California. He has a YouTube channel. It's called Jim Stump. It's that simple, his name. And I'm going to take one of his videos. It's a video that he made just yesterday, I believe, as of this recording, where he kind of introduces himself, talks about what he does. Listen, Jim has made available on his channel a an email address that goes directly to him, and he is welcoming contact from you, and he's welcoming your concerns. And he's not charging for this. This isn't a, hey, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Um Come email me here on my YouTube channel. Tell me what your problems are. And yeah, I'll figure out the fee and, and tell you, hey, for this amount of money, I'll help work you, help you get through this. Uh -uh. He is uh, doing the work of an angel and he wants to know what's going on with folks because he is qualified to give advice. And I have so many bookmarks in this book because when I gave the book review on this book, I wanted to hit on all these main points that really touched me but there was just no no time to do it. I think that video went for more than 30 minutes and I never even got through half of them. But the thing about the 100,000 paper cuts, that, that goes back to Jim. I'm kind of stealing his thunder, but I want to explain that briefly so you'll understand the caliber of the man Jim Stump is and why. In the least, I want you to go to his channel after this video. Again, I'm going to put his video at the end of mine so it comes up. Go watch it. Subscribe. Uh, to his channel he doesn't have a lot of videos up yet and ordinarily ordinarily i would never send anybody to a channel that that has less than 50 videos but this isn't even about for jim being monetized and building a huge uh network on youtube like i mean that's a goal of mine and that's a, a goal of travis Daigle's over at fighting past 40 jim just wants to help people so if he never gets to a thousand subscribers and he never gets 4,000 watch hours, I don't think he'll care as long as he knows that maybe a couple dozen of you might have gone over and told him, hey, this is kind of bothering me. And you've given him the opportunity to help help you find your way through that. So, but he made a video yesterday and it's called 100,000 Little Paper Cuts. And I watched that and, and he, he doesn't waste all your time, 20 to 30 minutes talking like I do. His videos are three to eight minutes long. Uh, to the point, but but well worded, well put, meaningful. Uh, he he talked about um, parents who will often come to him who have adult children, you know, my age, maybe a little bit younger than me, maybe a little bit older than me, and they say, you know, my kid never calls, he he or she never comes and sees me, um, and I never did anything to him. I never abused him. I did everything right. I gave them a home to live in. I put a roof over their head. They always had food. They had clothes. Uh, and, and they, they're just so disrespectful. They, they, they don't think about me. They don't give me the time of day. And uh, Jim explains about how, you know, uh, yeah, you might not, you may have never broken your kid's arm. You might have never punched them in the face and broke their nose. Uh, but you might have given them uh, over the long haul, a hundred thousand tiny little paper cuts. What's that mean? You might ask. Well, what that means is, uh, did you crush their dreams when they came to you and said, hey, dad, you know, I want to do this, you know, or I want to do that uh, with my life. I want to pursue this career when I grow up. Did you say, oh, you can't do that. You got to be smart to do that. You're not smart enough to do that. Or did you say, oh, that's stupid, you know, or, or, or you know, was it a, if it was a daughter, you know, did she want to join the beauty pageant? Did you tell her, oh, gosh, you don't even think about that. Your feet are too big. Look at how fat you are. Why would you embarrass yourself like that? You know those things are rigged. Our family's not as popular as some of the other families in town. There's no way you're going to beat that girl. She's prettier than you anyway. Uh, Jim explains how these, these little jabs, are, it's like inflicting a little paper cut. And once you get to 100,000 of them or more, the, the child has grown. They're an adult. They don't want them anymore. They don't want them. Okay. They've been raised. They no longer need you for support in most cases. Now, things are different with Gen Z. I know that. And well, around here in Charlottesville, a lot of folks my age and older who still mooching off their parents. That's common in affluent areas. But uh, for the most part, 
uh, I'm 48. I can take care of myself. I have been for a long time. A lot of folks my age, plus or minus 10 years or even 20 years are in the same boat and they don't need any sort of assistance. So they just don't go back for those paper cuts because they became too painful. Uh, this is the type of thing Jim talks about. And there is power in what people like Jim do, especially when like Jim, they're qualified to do it. I'm not, I can share my experiences. I can tell you about the paper cuts. Uh, and that's something that I've been moving away from. You know, I made a video about a month ago about having uh, one of my care providers growing up had borderline personality disorder, never got help. And I mentioned in that video about how, you know, a lot of people thought I was going out, getting away from YouTube and never making more videos. No, I was getting away from that type of video because here's the deal. The thing about the wounds, yeah, sure, they leave scars and they affect us for life, but you've got to let those wounds heal. And I was continually taking off the scabs to go back and relive the injuries because I thought, well, it's helping somebody out here. And every time I did that, I had to relive part of the pain. And I don't want to do that anymore. And I'm not going to. And that's why I'm sending you to Jim Stump. Uh, I have a wonderful life. Uh, there are parts of my life that are sad, and I simply accept that. And I certainly don't dwell on it, though, because dwelling on it makes you get away from the, makes me put down the paper and pick up the something. And this is all figurative speech. Uh, you know, briefly, I remember once in college, second semester, my second year, I was striving to get a 4.0, never got a 4.0 in college, but that semester I had five classes, uh, never missed a class that whole semester. I got four A's and a B, I had a 3.85 GPA, and I was so proud of myself, and I was just, you know, thinking grad school, this is the next step, and all these things, and I remember going, taking this news to one of my adult care providers, and there was no, just no comment, no comment, all weekend long, so then I'm going back to school at the end of the weekend, and I finally asked him, aren't you proud of me? And he said, well, you're the one that's going to benefit from it, not me, so why should I care? Now the paper cut. Well, what I'd do is I'd grab the knife and make it bigger by way of self-sabotage. Uh, the next semester I had a 2.0 GPA. It took me six years to get out of college. Um, I almost failed out. If my GPA hadn't been so high in those first couple of years, uh, I would have. Um, now listen, with that said, I also want to say this. I do not blame my care providers. That stopped. That stopped years ago. Here's the deal though. Once you reach that point, when you say, okay, listen, these things happened. Those are fact, but I don't want that life anymore. I want the dream. So I've got to, I've got to let this rest. I can't blame. And I really believe these folks did the best they knew how to do. Um, and in comparison to how they were brought up. I did have it better, uh, but at the same time, I said no more paper cuts. No more paper cuts, and I stopped going back for the paper cuts, and now I live the dream. Uh, you know, well, whatever, I was going to give more examples, but the, the, the response was always, you can't, you won't, you're not good enough, you think you're better than you are, you're getting up on that high horse. And so that knife that I would use, the figurative knife through self-sabotage for many years and for the longest time was alcohol. And it, after the war, it was even drugs because I had such easy access to them through the VA and the army hospitals. Uh, I, you know, I would be successful in business and I would go back trying to seek approval from people that had given me a proven track record. I would never receive approval. They would come out with the paper cuts and I would self-sabotage after that by binge drinking for months uh, and damn near going out of business by the time I pulled my head out of my ass and stopped doing it. Uh, I just got tired of living that way. So, and a lot of you folks that are listening, I know you're like, yeah, right on, right on. This is why we love your channel. Same thing here, same thing here. Listen, I'm not the guy that's qualified to help get you through this. Uh, this guy is Jim Stump. Again, his video is going on the end of this one. Uh, and I just don't, these are the types of things that I, I said in the video last month, I, I can't do anymore. I just don't want to anymore. I want to come out here and I want to tell the creepy ghost stories that people are sending in to crazylakeatmail.com. I can't wait to come out in October and read you every single story from my book, October Nights Part 2, 31 More Tales for the Halloween Season. I love it when I make videos about me and my wife going hiking or with our, with our son when he's with us, fishing, 
we made videos of our trip out to the Grand Canyon in the in the mountains of, of, of Colorado. Uh, I focus on the good and it gets better. If I go back and look on the bad, things get worse. And so I'm not going to do it. But at the same time, I did not want to leave you hanging because when those emails started coming through and thank God for Erie, my channel administrator, because she she gets that now. And I don't want anybody who sent those emails to feel bad because there were so many of them. And I was like, number one, I'm not qualified to deal with this stuff. And number two, I'm only where I am on YouTube because of those of you who watch my videos. And I'm not talking about the assholes who come on here and say, this is fake. All his videos are fake. Let me tell you, this video is very real. Well, except for the ketchup on my arm. Hey, I'm as real and as transparent as you can get. And the folks who support me, the folks who are listening right now, I appreciate you so much that I went out and found somebody who is qualified to help you with some of the things you were emailing me about. And that guy's name is Jim Stump. He's got an email. It's counselors. I mean, I'm going to get that wrong. It's something like counselors couch 101 at mail.com, I think. But make sure you verify that through his channel. So uh, I'm going to wrap up with that because I want to show you. I mean, look. We can all go back. That's a log splitter under there. Don't worry, it's not one of the blanket monsters. Whatever that was out in the woods might have been. But listen, we can all focus on the bad. We can all go back and say, oh, this happened, this is terrible. And if we do, that's where we have a tendency to stay. But I will urge you, I would urge you, if you're continuing to go back for the paper cuts, stop. Because I, I have compared and contrasted myself, uh, who stopped going back for the paper cuts more than a dozen years ago. Now, I, I went back and I reached out last year and, and nothing came out of that except more attempted paper cuts, of which I rejected. My rock trumped their paper, and then we will happily go back to being estranged. I didn't take the cuts. But I compared and contrasted myself to somebody in a very similar situation who has continued to go back for the paper cuts because she feels that she owes it to them because they created her, okay? And I'm gonna share this briefly. I'm just trying to show you the, the beautiful life I have. Everything you see here is mine. Well, I mean, you know, I'm borrowing it while I'm here and I'm doing the best I can do to be a good, a good, uh, you know, what do you call it? The people take care of the land. Not a servant, but a good, you know, I'm doing my best to take care of what I have while I have it. And I'm grateful for all of it. And this isn't, oh, look at me, look what I've done. But what I will tell you is if I hadn't stopped going back for the paper cuts, it never would have happened. I'd be in a gutter right now. I'd be in an insane asylum. I'd be in a prison. I'd be in a grave. I'd be dead. Because you can only self-sabotage so much before your number's up. So, uh, a friend of mine... She came and she stayed with us uh, for a couple of days. And she was in a very, well, she's in the same situation as me. And her next stop was to go visit her care provider she had while she was growing up, who continued to inflict these paper cuts. She's a year older than me. The entire night before she left our home to go see these folks, that she only sees a couple times out of, a, a year. And of course, and again, she says she only does it because she feels obligated to do it. She was up all night. Listen, she was in perfect health when she got here. Stayed for a couple of days. We had a great time. She loves Miss Dearly's Asian food that she cooks, uh, Filipino food. The entire night before she left our house to go see that those parental figures, she was up vomiting and suffering from diarrhea. As we'd say back in Appalachistan, she was thrown up from both ends all night long just because of the anxiety she was experiencing, knowing what she was going to receive when she was getting ready to go to where she was going. And this is a woman who's 50 years old. And, and, and I look at myself having rejected going back for more paper cuts a decade ago, and I was all the more happy for it. You don't deserve those paper cuts. And I hope you're not delving them out. You should see Jim Stump's channel popping up here somewhere towards the end of this video now. Go over there. Subscribe, subscribe like, listen to the man's videos. Send him an email if you need somebody you need to talk to, okay? You don't have to suffer in silence. Email Jim Stump. See you for more next time.